Hi there. This is AD and welcome to Crime and Justice. How's everyone been? Sorry I took a bit of time coming on. I did alter it till 10 past 8 because I was running late. I forgot to set it up. So, and then I've just had to go and do something to eat, which will be coming about. Well, I haven't, I've just ordered it. <laughs> because I've been a bit busy today. Because, you know what? I don't post anything on my Facebook page that goes against any content. Nothing. Right? Nothing. But apparently on my my original Facebook page, hmm, the one I use for family and friends, and my two groups that I'm in, somewhere along the line, I've violated some rules. Hmm, don't know how. So now I've got to sort out some paperwork and get all that into them just to confirm I am who I am. You know what I mean? Flipping on my head in today. So I've had to go round because everything I wanted for tonight's life was on my Facebook page. But I can only get on that Facebook page through my first Facebook page. I know. I know it sounds silly, but that's how it works. And because they're blocking me on my main Facebook page, I can't get to my other Facebook page. So if I to spend hours searching for all the info and then downloading it onto YouTube and all this lot and then trying to find out the information they want for me to send to them, which I gave up on that. I gave up on that. I've got it. I just don't know where I put it. So, anyway, as the title suggests, we're looking at CP and KP interview part two because we did one the other week. I think it was Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, where we looked at the interview and what he was saying. It wasn't so much the interview, it's what they were saying. Well, tonight I'm looking at two interviews, but it's more as to the way he acts in the first interview to the way he behaves in the second interview. And we're also looking at the dispatch call because there's some things in that dispatch call which contradicts what he says in one of these interviews. So we're going to be looking at that as well. So let's just get this up on the screen for you. As you can see, this is the interview that was done with the Duchess. Great interview. But I just think, and you'll hear it in one part. I think it's the part where I'm going to start it. Right, because we had to wait. It went over an hour before he actually coming on this interview. Over one hour. But because on this interview, this is just my opinion, may not be true, just my opinion, I think they was going through the questions as to what they should ask and what they shouldn't ask. And I can understand there's a lot of questions that are stupid and you, you just don't want to keep asking those stupid questions. So I can understand that. But it was a good interview. But is when you listen to the second interview that we will show you, you'll see because that that wasn't a planned interview with CP, is he was actually in chat 
listening to what was being said. And apparently he tagged him off and wanted on the panel. So he comes on the panel and he comes up like a bull in a china shop. Why? Because he didn't he didn't like what he was hearing. Why? He didn't like what people now we only like when you're in chat and you got no I was interviewing one of the private investigators. So they was asking her questions that they wanted cleared up. They've heard stuff on Facebook, wherever, and I was asking her these questions so she could, well, nope, that isn't true, nope, that isn't true, so on and so on. And he didn't like the questions I was asking. But we'll look at that in a minute. So this one, I just want to show you this one. We're not going to do a long, long of this one. All right, so he goes. In your face? Hey! You know, whoa. He's, he deals with some social and emotional dysregulation issues. Mm -hmm. Simply put, he, he his emotions or responses don't always appropriately match the situation. Um, and, and socially, he can be somewhat awkward interacting with others because he doesn't always match, like... I don't know how to say it right. Like it, someone will want to talk about one conversation, but if that's not the subject he's fixating on, he will just railroad over that and go right back to what he's thinking. Um, but at the same time, he's also, for the most part, a pretty happy kid and he loves being a helper and he likes, you know, he likes animals and he's really smart um, he, he can play in a game of chess and he's beat grown men in chess. He actually likes reading occasionally, but only if it's what he wants to read. Um, so like Minecraft books, um, he loves to read those. Um, albeit his humor is a little different. He's funny. I, I prefer he's silly more than anything. How is he with strangers? Depends on the day, to be honest with you. He goes either he's never met a stranger all the way to, depending on his mood, he don't want nothing to do with anybody. So it's kind of difficult to answer that question because it varies depending on where he is in the moment. Okay. Normally, he he's he's. There's times he's not afraid to talk to people. There's times he is afraid to talk to people. Um, adults maybe not so much, but children he he has no problem approaching children and talking. Um, for the most part, for the most part, like I said, it, it it's it just depends on what mood and what day of the week you catch him. Okay, Artie, right, do you have a question you'd like to ask? I just wanted to know if maybe. Thinking back on it, is there anything you can think of that seemed off or out of the ordinary prior to him going missing that, during the night before you noticed he was missing? I honestly didn't notice anything that was like, oh, my God, that's weird. You know, I mean, we we had a really good day. You know, he wasn't in trouble at all. We went to bed on a good note. And I, I don't know if maybe he just wasn't saying something. But nothing. And I've gone over this so many times. I'm ill, but I didn't see or notice anything that was like red flag, you know? Okay. You didn't have any. That's what makes, like, if he did run away, right, just for, take, stop a sec and just think, if he did, and he's one of these childs that's managed to not catch, not leave any footprints, any scent, or catch any cameras. <clears throat> but say he did run away. As his father said at the beginning, something must have happened where he felt it was out of his control, out of his comfort zone, right, for him to run out of that house or leave that house 
And I say wrong because he left without no shoes. <laughs> now, if he was leaving, he just took his shoes. But then again, if it's true what we was hearing, if it's true that they used to put him in the garage, right? Perhaps he didn't have, wasn't able to get his shoes because his shoes were kept by the front door. And I believe it's in this interview they mentioned something about the keys. And um, they said, um, we can't go into that. Now, why can't they? So did Sebastian get hold of a key to the door, the garage door, whatever? Did he leave through the garage? Did he leave and run? Do you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of things I say in this interview, like they can't talk about the keys. Right? Are all the keys okay? But that's something we can't discuss because it will interfere with the investigation. I'm thinking, hold oh, on, you said he would go out the front door, so you don't need key for the front door because it's a a key pad, a number pad, right? So you don't need a key to get out that door. You just need the code. And when you shut the door, you just hit a button and it locks again. So you don't need a key for So why would he not tell us about the keys? So there's lots of things in here. And when we get to the second interview, which we will do, any meltdowns or anything like that, that 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 seemed off? <laughs> no, he was actually really well behaved that day. He was even killed for the most part all day. I uh, can I ask a question? Uh, sure. Was was that um, unusual? Or him being well behaved all day? Not necessarily. And Sebastian goes through phases. He's got streaks where he's great, and then it's like he goes through remission. Yeah, like he, he'll screw up and he'll, <laughs> he'll get in trouble, and then. He'll be good again. And he'll screw. I mean, he's he's like a typical kid, um, in a sense. But he just has autism, and I mean, it, it's but, hit or miss. But like, he'll be doing really, really great for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden, it's like he'll flip a flip a switch. Sorry, and you know, and then we're you know we're working on you know going to the bathroom, and we're working on manners, and we're working on attitude, and then you know, and then we'll go through that phase, and then we'll go through you know, and he'll he'll flip the switch again, and he's you know doing really great. He just goes through. I understand. And you that know, completely like, trust me. <laughs> progress, backpedal, progress, backpedal, you know, but it now when I saw on social media, um, oh. some people were talking about um Seth had spoken on um, I guess it was um maybe it was the Pascal show that he recently spoke on, and he was talking about how um at the end of the school year, Sebastian was supposed to come and live with him. Um and can you tell us anything about that? Was is there anything specific to know about that? I think a lot of people have been, you know, have been saying some very interesting things. Um, oh, I think it's back here. That kind of situation. Um, Eighty-two. Mm-hmm. Thought criminal says I listen to all and make up my own mind, as you should. Right, uh, right. We'll go up here, Beth. Go for me. Last night, and um, he said, uh, Trev apparently quoted her um, uh, from some comments on a YouTube chat. Um, is there anything that that you want to say about this particular comment? Because I have been messaged multiple times about this. Um, if you want to address it, you don't, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. I just I, wanted to ask I, you. I, I will address it. I have, like I said, I, if somebody's refusing to address something that shows suspicion, I have no problems to address this. The grand but you have a he has a lot of problems addressing simple things like the keys. You don't need to know what brand a key is, you just need to know did he have a key? Was all the keys alloc a lot uh, allocated for? You know what I mean? And he won't talk about that. grandmother which is seth at that robin is the name she's seth biological father's mom 
and if you listen closely, this is where he does like a little merry dance around him. He doesn't actually answer the question. She made her statement on whatever YouTube channel. That's fine. Um, Thank you, Trev. What I can say on that is real simple. Like I said earlier in, the, in this podcast, kids are going to say things. They're going to get upset because you're a parent and they don't like your answers. Um, Sebastian has said, like I said before, the same thing about his biological father. But when you sit your kids down and you explain to them that being a parent, you have to do things that they don't like. You know, unfortunately, it is what it is. We're not as parents. Everybody knows we're not to be our child's best friends. We're there to be parents. As a parent, your job in life is to make sure your offspring grow up to be better than we ever have been or get things better than we ever could get. And that's your legacy. That's our job. And kids don't like it. They're not going to understand because they're still young. Their minds are being molded. But eventually they're going to. So his legacy is to use a belt on a child, scare the crap out of him. You know what I mean? That's his legacy. Child. grow up and when they have their own kids they're going to look back and go man our parents were right because everybody that's in the feck if I had a father like that I'd be going man I'm glad I ran away when I did adult that has kids right now not one person can say no he's wrong because you know you've all done it we still do it and that's just part of it right and thank you, Trev, for being here. I thought this was a very important, you know, when I saw this, it's, you know, it, it really kind of shocked me. And I felt like, you know, while you're willing, you know, to answer questions, um, I thought it was an important question to ask. Um, Trev said, she said Chris verbally abused her, and that's very different than parenting. Um, I, I just wanted to ask because people have a lot of questions. And so that was um I just wanted to ask you, and it was, you know, no shade to Trev time. He just was posting that that's what happened in the chat, and he did verify that it was her. So, um, you know, I just wanted to to bring it well, straight to you. The best way well, to clarify to, clear, to ask. To clear up her statement about me being verbally abusive to her, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, she's not going to tell you the full story. But there's always, remember, three sides to the truth, hers, mine, and the truth in itself. So you can put figure it out. Me and the grandmother had a conversation, and this all goes stems back to um, an incident that a family member did that as the parents, we had consulted with law enforcement about something. They recommended not doing it. Lo and behold, something happened and something was done against what we decided. Uh, I reached out to the mom and asked for her help. During that conversation, some accusations got flung uh, in my direction and toward my wife which the mother or the grandmother actually doesn't have the whole story. She has never once sat down with me, my wife, her son, and gotten the full truth on everything. She's only heard one side of the story. And I can promise you, I've got text messages, I got, and I'm not afraid to show them. I'm not afraid to screenshot them and let, let the public see it. Now, I will say, unfortunately, none of this has to do with the investigation of our son. But, yes, we had a heated discussion. Yes, I sent her an apology for the heated discussion, and I've never received anything back from the grandmother, which I have always left that door open. In fact, the day when they got into town, I invited them to my house, and welcomed them in. They stayed for a couple hours, and they left. I helped them guide them to the direction where they were putting their RV, and have always made it abundantly clear that regardless, people are going to have their disputes. Doors always open. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Cluminati, yes, asked this several times in chat, so I want to go ahead and address that. Where can locals be looking for Sebastian? Um, Cluminati is local to your area, and um, she would like to know where you would I'm like to get past this bit because I'm not keen on that YouTuber. You're with Chris, but if she wants to speak, she will speak. But yes, she is. Um, vet girl, I do got a question. I think we have a delay, Crystal. Sorry. Because it's okay. <laughs> I think we let do. Me, let um, me ask this question real how quick. How many did Sebastian have? Say it one more time. How many pairs of shoes did Sebastian have? Oh uh, well. I'm not going to see how many shoes he has, but I will say that all of the shoes he has are accounted for. Why is she so touchy about people asking about how many shoes he had? 
I know people have got 50, 60, but I know people have got two or three. Okay? Because like this fact, like Katie, she throws them out when they become too small or they're no good, they're falling apart. You know what I mean? They've got holes in. She throws them out. Why keep shoes that you're not going to wear? I must admit, I've got shoes in my bedroom, but they do fit me. They haven't worn out. I just don't think of wearing them ones, like me, certain trainers and things like that. I've got several pairs of trainers, but I mainly wear my boots, sort of thing, my ankle boots that I like to wear. So, what's your stuff from you about that? Did y'all did y'all catch mom? No. Um, I didn't quite hear a little bit. May, did you? Hear? Okay, she said that she would not divulge how many pairs of shoes he has, but law enforcement and has accounted for every pair of shoes. I have accounted for all of the shoes. Okay. But why does law enforcement in that one interview they do state, when I ask him about him leaving the house barefoot, he goes, we can't... Oh, done. I'll just let this video run through. Um, Ken, Vet Girl says, can you ask what Sebastian's normal school night routine is? Like some kids like to have their shower or a favorite blanket, their favorite pajamas. Please and thanks. Sure. Sebastian comes home, gets off the school bus, comes in the house, um, does his chores, completes his homework, um, eats dinner. Uh, that time kind of varies. I don't have a set time on that. Bedtime, we normally have it right around 8.30, 9 o'clock. Sebastian gets a shower most of the time before he goes to bed, um, around 7 o'clock-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like I said, he's he's in the bed by 9 o'clock. And Sebastian didn't have anyone that lived in the area that he hung out with at all that lives near you? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Alicia P., for that question. And then Alan Tank says, um, what's Sebastian like with people outside the family that he doesn't know? Is he shy with strangers? Is he outgoing? So uh, that, that question you asked earlier in the podcast, it depends. It Each day it kind of varies. Um, he can be shy. He can be talkative uh, with most kids. He don't hold back when it comes to kids. He is like, you know, he's but he's got a up close and in your face kind of thing that he's got to work on. So it kind of makes it difficult uh, with adults. It depends. Uh, there are some days he doesn't even want to talk to family members and some days he may. Um, it just kind of depends. Okay. And hang on one second. I'm just getting to the next one. Artie, did you or Crystal have a question that you wanted to ask? No, I just I, I really want to make sure that the audience has a chance to get all their questions in. Yeah, I'm going through each one of them right now. Um, some of them have already been asked, so I'm not asking those. Um, let's see. Uh, Alan Tank says, does Katie look in on him if she gets up to use the bathroom or anything in the night usually? Not normally. I've never really had a whole reason to. I mean, now that well, she wouldn't because her bathroom is off her bedroom. So I must admit, if it was me, I wouldn't be going out of my bedroom, across the kitchen, across the living room, to my son's room. Not at 15, not when he's 15. I wouldn't be. Why? Unless something woke me up and I thought, what was that noise? Then yes, I'd be going over to check. But she's one side of the house, he's the other. And she's at the back end of the house and he's at the front end of the house on opposite sides. 
So she's not going to hear nothing. That he's older, at least. Um, he gets up in the middle of the night and he comes down and gets snacks. And, you know, and uh, the dogs don't even bark at him because he shushes them and they know him. But, um, no, I've never, since he's gotten older, I don't really have a reason to, like, peek in on him and wake him up. And does he get up and down normally throughout the night on a regular basis? True Crime Cafe with Dago ask. Um, it, honestly, yeah. he gets up and down at different times, different nights. I mean, not always. Um, I mean, he goes in the kitchen and he'll sneak snacks and sweets and things he knows he's not supposed to be having. Like, um, I get her every other year on spring breaks. I get her in the summers. Um, and I get her like we split the Christmas time frame. Okay. Our, our parent, my parenting plan. Get up, go get snacks, and go back to his room. So he did regularly get up at night. Mom saying he regularly got up at night. Where Summer wanted to know what Sebastian's favorite food, drink is it ice cream, chips? <laughs> he anything is a, with sugar in it. Anything with sugar. Favorite drink is probably a Yoo-Hoo. No, he takes chocolate milk over Yoo-Hoo. Oh, well, okay. Well, chocolate drink, chocolate milk. As yeah. long as it's not the fat-free chocolate milk that the school switched to, because he's really upset that the school switched the chocolate milk to fat-free, and now he doesn't like it. Um, who did Sebastian love the most out of everyone? Uh, I was okay. going to not um, that question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you want to how I would answer that. But... Anyway. This interview is pretty boring, right? And I've got it in writing, and I'm going to pull it up. Because what I'm going to do, I want to go through that um, dispatch call. But like I said, there's part of this interview that I know He's, I don't know if this interview was done before the dispatch call came out, probably. So perhaps he didn't know. But oh, I've got to go right down here because. There's a quick way for to skip these pages, you know what I mean? Because it's so slow. So I'm trying to guess. Uh, this is just where Chris comes into it now. My um. Right, we're going to start here, because I want to discuss what she says about getting up in the morning. But can you just give me a second, because I've just had a bottle of Coke delivered, and I can never open a chops of them, unless I pour like, some water just around the rim of the bottle. So give me a second, I'll be straight back.
Oh, I'm back. I'm back. She goes, yeah, Sunday morning. I'll start at the morning. Sunday morning. We got up and I made a fun breakfast. Now, to me, because she actually said in one interview, and I said, I think it was in the interview with Chronicles of Olivia, she said, a fun fact. I made breakfast. Okay. Fun fact. Hold on. You're the mother. Should you not be doing breakfast? Oh my God. I need to put that in the fridge. It's so warm. <coughs> you know what I mean? And she goes on to say where they went to BJ's, where they met family members. We come home, put our groceries away, and went out and a little bit later. We went to the bowling alley and we played games. And that section there is where he's whispering to her, right? And this is when she goes, and this is just Bubba and I. And we went to dinner, just the two of us. Well, who else is it going to be? Hmm? Hold on. When you put, they come home, he puts the trash out, and then he goes to bed like a good 15-year-old just goes to bed at 9 o'clock. Yeah. I'm lucky if I can get my grandson to bed at 9 o'clock, never yeah, alone a 15-year-old. Right, so it just doesn't seem to sit right with me. Uh, and then she goes on about how her husband works away and they do these phone calls regular. Hmm, okay. This is it. She goes, oh, this is the Duchess. Okay, all right. Let me get over here because I have some other questions that are coming in. And as she says that, She's flicking through the questions. And you'll say, and Chris says, I will say this much. Let them ask the questions. I mean, we're, we're, we're not hiding anything. I've heard so much negativity that I refuse to answer questions. Let them fly. I mean, I'll be respectful on my responses. I would hope they will be respectful in their questions. But please, let them fly. We are good. So... Even if I had a big channel and I, I still wouldn't have him on my, have him on, yeah. I really wouldn't. I'd have Katie, but I wouldn't have him. Because he's too arrogant. He's a narcissist. It's his way or the highway. Now, you're seeing how he was with that interview, right? Watch it. I'm sorry. Uh, let's get this out of the way. Let's get this small level again so I can go into my... Now we're going to go and... Should I do the dispatch audio? Yeah, I'll do the dispatch audio. It's only eight minutes long. And this is acknowledgement to Jay. It's for just. Do we have an estimated time of start for the search process? Call came in at six thirty-three this morning. Great, thank you. Right. Heading to juvenile. Two thousand eight traffic court. One zero zero eight traffic court. Right now, if we go back to this. To the very beginning. Right? How's your time? 6 a.m. to 6 48 a.m. Do we have an estimated time of start for the search process? Call came in at 6 33 this morning. So the call came through at 6 33. 
got came through to dispatch at 6.33. So, and we know that um, I posted this ages ago, that there's a picture put out of the times that some County Police uh, Sheriff's Office is open. And they're going open till 8 a.m. And I think they have close about 4.35, I think it said. I'm not sure now. But I know they said it didn't open till 8 a.m. So if he phoned the Sheriff's Office, he would have been uh, directed straight through to the dispatch. Because the office wasn't open, so all calls would go straight through to dispatch. And so him saying, I'm not going to phone 911 because it's, it's quicker to go through. It's because he was making the phone call and he wasn't in Tennessee. He would have had to explain to him, look, I'm in Tennessee, but I'm in Mississippi, but my wife is in Tennessee. My stepson has gone missing who lives in Tennessee. They have gone. Well, why isn't she phoning? You know what I mean? Why isn't the mother phoning? So, it goes through to, to dispatch, and this is what we're hearing now. Great, thank you. I'm going to you now. I'm going to make report. One zero zero eight have report. Here we go. Caller guys, this morning, I woke up in a 15-year-old girl. I was not in the bed. We have white male, three blonde hair, working with my guys, but I'm going to turn it down. I was going to be wearing a black sweatshirt, like sweatpants. Two males have a form of autism. This is the first time it happens. I was going to be in the home before midnight. All the doors are locked at this time. Did four in a row. 47. I got the call bigger to ask if you have to do my husband on break. Central 268. I am Mrs. Fireball. Good. Central 2, 47, Two miles left his son at the house. The mother is driving around looking for him in the big party place subdivision, and she is driving in a big blue infinity. In the area. Check long haul out. Just same way. You can take me off the assist fire. I'll be en route to the missing juvenile. Next big track back up. Going into the construction side over here. Next big track back up. Going into the construction side over here, back towards the beach. That's important behind you. Awful muddy. Do you see any footprints or anything? You shouldn't have any shoes on. Hey, this is all dry, hard, Pat. I do have some footprints over here. Right there where you're standing? Yeah, leading right over here to the retaining pond. Huh. No shoes, just footprints? My shoes, but Max went straight into the pond. Max led me straight to the retaining pond. Over behind, well over where to go right into the, into the water. There was a few uh, footprints in some of the softer dirt uh, headed straight this way on the track that he was running. 47, what time shoot is he wear? <coughs> Size 10. Well, to any units that are going to be assisting with 1008, please come to 1008, Davacore. Yeah, can you just, I don't know, that's the parents are more over there. Just on down the field, there was a white car with a hoodie with homeless folks all over there. 24. Anybody that does a residence, can they ask the parents? Mom doesn't advise us. I'm going to call one. 10 more things. 12 Central. 12 Central. Can we make sure that this has been rolled out through Hendersonville and Galton? Also, um, they were at Dragon Square last night, uh, just bowling at some games. Can you have a unit go there and just go around and make sure that he hasn't returned there? Um, make sure he didn't want to continue his day. 47 to Pam. 47. 1011. And 1015, have ring cameras, but didn't pick up anything. Yep. 517, Hendersonville is with me. Uh, 1006, no contact. 1008, made contact. Haven't seen anything. 1010, contact. They haven't seen anything. Nothing on Rangerville. 
47 and a half. 47. One thousand twenty-three and one thousand twenty-four. Both have three cameras over in Illinois. One four. Command the units on Stafford. One to the command post. If you say anything, I'll be out of pocket for just a few seconds. Command the units on Stafford. One to the command post. If you say anything, I'll be out of pocket for just a few seconds. One thousand twelve killing lane through one thousand and twenty. All checked. One thousand twelve. Let me go through the entire house. All right. The lady at 10 uh, runs the neighborhood Facebook page and she's updating it to request people looking across cross bases and hidden areas. 10 4. 68 Go ahead. Hi, hey, uh, at 1017 Kill Online, did y'all happen to check the cross base? I will have to check my list, but if it wasn't locked from the outside, it was checked. 1018 Stafford. You're reviewing their camera footage right now. Ten four. Are you guys giving them numbers to call if they find anything? Several Check cameras. One eighty four. You're low volume. I got. They got cameras checked. Ten four. One thousand eighteen. They check cameras. Uh, no contact. Ten four. Four six four. Go ahead. Going to walk through the cemetery. Just to the west of the hospital. Going to walk through the cemetery. Just to the west of the hospital. Ten four. Well, I'll be honest, uh, St. John Mich Missionary, 285, check along, on foot. Yeah. Enterfield 517, to command. 517, go ahead. Your assignment to all units. 12 all units, when you're done with your assignment, please come back to 1008 Stafford. 6K command. Contact, nothing on their cameras, and nothing in the tree house behind the house. Houses. Lane, checked. Correct. All houses on Kellen Lane have been checked. Devonport has been checked as well. Devonport. Devonport. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. Right, now, that was part of a dispatch call. The one I had, which was on my Facebook page, which I can't get to because there's a dispute with my main Facebook page, had literally the whole day of the dispatch call. And on it, I remember them saying, that the construction site manager right, would let them know was going to speak to all his men and make sure they check all the properties and if anything was out of place, anything am amiss, to let them know and then he would let the police know. I'm thinking, hold on, is the police not supposed to be checking those houses themselves should they not have gone through all them empty houses and those buildings with the dogs that's what's going on i need to find that uh video that audio that i had on facebook i know it's on youtube because i heard it on youtube i just can't find it but anyway we are going to now go over to This interview. Oh, I can find it. Oh, it is. Now, this is a, a lot better, this interview, because I just find uh, some some of the interviews. Hey, everyone. Uh, Welcome to Web Sleuth. Right. They ask a question. Right. When they're doing these interviews, they ask a question and follow on with about three more, like, explanations as to why they're asking that question. I'm thinking, why do you do that? You've asked a question, let them answer. Don't follow it up with why are you asking them that question and then giving them the answers to answer that question with why. Now, this one, she's good. She doesn't do that. 
So <clears throat> YouTube live. And uh, normally we could. Well, watch a little bit of this first. This These have checked everywhere. You know, you would assume that they have looked all through the camper. You would assume that they would have looked at um, Chris's parents, RV or camper. And, I, but and again. I have no. Yeah. Confirmation. You have no idea. You have no idea. You just, we just have to assume, we have to assume the police have done their job in that sense. But uh, let's talk a little bit now. Uh, Chris has a petition up. Right. And it is a petition to get the FBI to take over. Uh, the Seth case. has a petition up. Yeah. Seth, yeah. Seth, yeah. Seth has, has petition up uh, to get the FBI to take over Sebastian's case. How come? Um, well, the FBI has been involved, um, but he wants them to take over. I think he's just frustrated. Mm -hmm. See, she asks the question and then throws it out there to him to answer. That's what I like. I've been typing the transcript up for this, and I only started it, when was it, what day are we on now, Friday? I started it Wednesday late afternoon-ish, and I only did a couple of hours then, and then I did a couple of hours yesterday and a couple of hours today, if that, on and off. Not constant two hours on and off, but it's just two hours on and off. So not even two hours, you, you could say. And I'm over halfway through this interview because they're not boring me. They're not boring me by asking a question, but then taking another 10 minutes before they let the person ask, answer. Right? And I understand people aren't qualified. People. They're not qualified to do interviews. They haven't been trying to do it. But just ask the question and let them answer. Simple as. Um, which I understand. Right. We we haven't had any results, you know. Um, right. So I understand his frustration. Um, and I, I think that's really it. Is he wants another jurisdiction to take over. I mean, mm -hmm. above TBI and Sumner County. Um, but yeah, they've been involved. I mean, um, Secret Service has been involved. And right. yeah, I mean, a lot of other jurisdictions have been involved with the boots on the ground searching as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, but his goal is to have them take over. Okay, that's good. Well, that's good. I don't, I don't blame him, you know. Uh, also, somebody just asked, did, uh, did Katie have a boyfriend? And, I, you know, there's nothing, nothing like that has ever been stated. Okay. That, I mean, uh, it's been stated, but it's there's I've found no evidence of that. Um, right. and it's honestly not something I'm focusing on. Sure. Um, because as when I'm seeing it stated, um, it's who are you even like? Who are you? That's saying right. It's, you know. Right. Exactly. And that again, you know, this is about Sebastian. Now, here is a question. Um, and again, Sebastian, according to Katie, disappeared sometime in the middle of the night, <laughs> but. Supposedly, there is no ring camera showing Sebastian leaving, although there is ring camera because the neighbors have all have ring cameras. Yeah, I've mapped it. Um, <laughs> yeah, tell us about that, and then we'll get to this question. You actually so mapped the ring I camera. Mapped, um, you know, the first 11 minutes of the dispatch, once once dispatch started at 6.39 a.m. Mm -hmm. for Sebastian, um, there's 11 minutes that were released and then had a, a great volunteer transcribe them for me, which took her a very mm -hmm. long time because it was chaos. Um, but through that transcription, you can see where they're saying this address has a camera. I spoke to them. They looked at it, all this. And so I made a map just from that dispatch. Um, mm -hmm. there's probably more cameras than that. It was only the first 11 minutes, you know, um, and there's a lot of cameras. But yet the police have said that there is no footage of Sebastian. Have they actually come out and said that to Seth? Um, I, I was actually watching one of the older press conferences, I think it was from the 29th of February. And mm -hmm. they were, I mean, the look on their faces, first of all, they were just baffled. Um, but they, they said they haven't had any confirmed sighting of him on camera or That's at all. Crazy. That is just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. But anyway, uh, I apologize that crunching you here is my dog, um, author of text, bug nugget, the first chewing I on his your dogs and the, fr her frogs yeah, and they're, the dogs, <laughs> and, the dogs it's all, and the cats, all part mm -hmm. of it here. Um, <laughs> Stephanie Hodge says, so did Sebastian unlock the door and go out or what was the door locked when she got up, or was it unlocked? Do you know if that what the situation um, is there? Katie and Chris have both said at different times the door was locked. They also, in the initial dispatch, when they're calling out the details um, to officers, say the door is locked. Um, I wasn't there. Right. Well, um, 
but he, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, and Katie's also said that Sebastian has a habit of immediately locking the door behind him. Um, mm -hmm. That was stated after everyone was really confused about that. Uh, Angela Conley said, did he take the bin, I think you mean the trash, <laughs> out before or after Chris left to go to work? I think Chris was already gone, right? Or well, no? Chris has said that he had not seen Sebastian since early February. Right. That's right. Yeah. So Chris was not, he wasn't not there. He wasn't there. So right. uh, anyway, so this, what's so frustrating about this, Chloe, is how, how could he have disappeared if there's no footage of him? That's here's the only thing that can be that's either a mistake and there is footage of him or he's still somewhere in the house. I mean, I don't know what else it could be. Yeah. I mean, so I walked through the construction site, which people that are have been following this case closely know exactly what I'm talking about. But mm -hmm. um, it's right next door to their subdivision. Half, probably half of the subdivision next door has been built, but then there's still like a big construction site in the back. Mm -hmm. Um, so I walked that last night actually, um, after the vigil at like 9 30 PM. Um, and it's very dark in the construction site. You definitely need a flashlight. Um, but once you get into that subdivision, it wasn't as dark as I ex expected it to be. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that means a ring camera would pick you up. Um, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of, I mean, a good majority of the houses have some sort of lighting on. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming it's always like that. I don't know if they're turning them on now because of what's going on, but um, a lot of them have, you know, the uplit stuff on the brick or floodlights or porch lights. Um, you know, it's a nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I didn't need to use a flashlight to walk through the neighborhood to be able to see. And, and I'm telling you with ring cameras, usually they have infra infrared so you can see right. somebody, mind you. Yeah. And, so but it does depend on like the sensitivity settings you have on your camera, how, far it is from the street, um, which, I mean, these are not huge lots. Um, yeah. I, I would have to pull up a parcel map again, but I mean, I wouldn't think they're more than like a quarter acre. So they're not large. Right. Um, so the houses are not super far from the road. Yeah. That, um, I don't know. It, uh, I, I just, this doesn't make any sense to me. I would love if a neighbor would say, who is that woman walking through my neighborhood last night? I right. would love if I would have gotten caught on camera. That would have been really interesting. That would have been very, very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As somebody pointed out in chat, let's just say hypothetically, and nobody's making any accusation here. Could Sebastian been put into Katie's car or truck without any sort of camera picking him up? Is that possible um, in the house? So she parks in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, always. Um, so, but I mean, I, she'd probably have to drive down the street with her headlights off. I would think. Um, Cause they would have said her car left, but her car did leave at some point. I would assume, you know, um, left, I mean, we know she, she drove through the high school, mm -hmm. like she said. Right. So, but, uh, so there is an entrance from the garage. It's not a detached garage, right? No, okay. Detached. So um, hypothetically, again, not making any accusation, but hypothetically right. she could put somebody in there and, uh, take off somewhere at some point. Sure. I mean, so. there's, yeah. I would think a camera would catch that. Maybe not if the headlights were off. Well, but again, if she, like she said, she drove at some point, she drove by the high school or whatever. Right. It was daylight at that point. Daylight. Yeah. Well, yeah. So she could have, you know, put something in her trunk or put something in her car. And I mean, just at that point, away. I mean, with in minutes, if not already, police were called. Mm -hmm. when she was driving through that parking lot. So again, I just, um, I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read chat here. Um, um, let's see. Web sleuths, hold on. Uh, can you ask, where are the clothes Sebastian wore Texas Roadhouse video? Do we know if he was wearing those clothes when he supposedly disappeared? Uh, I don't think he was wearing those clothes, no. Okay, but we don't know if the police have collected them or anything, right? We don't know. Don't know. Okay, so let's let's go back to um, the Proudfoot house. Right now, I've got Google Maps here, and she said they're talking about could they uh, could they have got Sebastian out of that house without anyone seeing? Yes, they could have. Hypothetically. They could have, because the car was in the garage, 
and from what I understand now, when they are at home, the car is in the drive. It's not in the garage no more. Hmm? Bit weird, that. Now he's gone missing and got parking the car in the garage. Anyway, so she could, his body could have been in that car. Right? Now, up here I've got the maps, yeah? As you can see, I've got Stafford Court and his, his house was just here. Right? Even though it's coming up 104, 108, right? Come down here, from here, down here, and along. And then she goes up here and along, right? Because she's caught on camera. Does it show on camera whether she came down this way and back home? Or does it show her going turning left that way onto oh, hold on. onto and I can get it again I'm not sure what that road is called it's called what Uh, some at Hope Road, right? Now, if she come out there, now, word, rumour is, and is only rumour, but several people have said this, not just one, several. Could, and, I'm going, I'm going to zoom right in, because it was something else I also heard in an interview. Right. Someone said several people reported seeing a car, the same design of car as Kathy Barrasox, parked up round here somewhere. Be here, here, here. I don't know, but here are storage units. Now, I don't know if those storage units have been searched. I don't know. We know he owns a storage unit, but we don't know which one. Now, she, now be it or not, me. Hi. Uh, I'm going to drop my little man just there. Right. Uh, if I lived where they lived and I needed a storage unit, I'd have some at local. Like this. Now, have the has law enforcement checked any of those storage units? We don't know. Does CP own or manage or whatever one of these storage rent one of these storage units? I don't know. However, rumor was Kathy Barrisock's car was seen. Either here, somewhere around here. Right? Now, this is Sumner County Law Enforcement for you. They went to this shop, to here, where the cameras were, right? And asked to check their cameras. Right? Two weeks after. It was reported about Sebastian going missing two weeks. Now, we can't blame the owner. Why? We can't blame him. He's not expecting to have to keep checking his cameras for people misbehaving and doing the wrong thing and breaking the law or things like that. His camera's there for security for his own staff, his own store, not for what's going on outside. Well, when the police went, their cameras, they came two weeks too late. Well, just, well, I don't know if it's two weeks or a week late, because they had footage 
but they couldn't go as far back to when they needed it. Right? So they couldn't go back to the, uh, when was he? The 26th of February. They could only go back to, I don't know, say to the 28th, 29th. Right? Because law enforcement, in their wisdom there, did not go and check their cameras straight away, whether they had reports of a car being there or not. That camera, that store is in the vicinity, right? It's in the vicinity, and it should have been checked. Simple. If they're checking the cameras on the school, right? If they're checking these cameras, I can't. We can't get into there because it won't let us. Oh, will it? Oh, it is. Am I on Google Earth? Or go no, Google Maps. I've tried this before. And it's never let me come in here before. Right? Uh, is there cameras? We can't see because it. The cameras will probably be under here somewhere. I'm trying to... But, uh... <laughs> yep, come, come. Well, it's not going to let me. For some reason, it just don't know. No, it keeps going past. Right, but the cameras, I should imagine, because I can't see none here, unless these are the cameras up here. Because there's some up there, and there's... Oh, hold on, let's see if I can zoom in. Let's see if I can zoom in. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Is that, my, that might be a camera, because there's one there, and there's one there. So they might be cameras. I can't see you know, anywhere else. Right. Anyway, so she's come along this way. She drove along here. They're seeing a car go past. Now, as a mother, your child is missing, but you don't pull up at the school and go in or knock on the ring the bell, do anything. Say, have you seen my son? Has my son been to the school yet? Has he arrived here? Has he walked here? You know what I mean? My son's missing. This is the place I should imagine he would come. No, she drives up and away. Now, does she go this way? Or does she go that way? <coughs> <coughs> That's a question I'd like to know. Because if she went that way, right, all along here, right, right along. Right on, come up, come up, come up, come up. Guess where we end up. Oh yeah, look what's over there. And who was reported to have been parked up round here, down here? Who was reported to have been parked up round here? Someone seeing her car. So I don't, I can't imagine it being here. I can imagine it maybe being parked here, or here, or maybe, you know what I mean, it's hard to say. But several people saw Kathy Barrasox, they believe it was Kathy Barrasox's car, right, parked up there. And as I said, I know Nina said when they first moved to Hendersonville, 
a lot of their stuff was put into storage because the place where they lived, they was living, was too small for all their furniture. So could this have been one of these storage units he had? So, let's go back. Let's go back to the interview, okay? Uh, well, uh, I'm just going to skip a little bit. We'll put Sebastian's picture up, and we've got the, um, you know, the the tip line up. This. Is I know, I know. I get all excited. You know, somebody comes on with a sock puppet. That'd be my luck. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not really worried that right, people can't read and do their own. Oh, I want to come down a bit. Okay, I first and foremost. Come to when you first comes into the interview. Well, it is terrible. Uh, now, this is a good question. You've inspired Ladybug Lady to become. How do I mute yourself? I uh, will mute you. Looking for my son. No. Oh. Uh... Who do we have here? I, I've put you on on the uh, hey, on yeah. the platform. You have me, Chris. You have Hi, Chris me, Proudfoot. Chris. I really appreciate you coming here. Um, I'm going to change the banner really quickly so everybody knows it's you. <laughs> but I don't know how long you've been listening. Long enough. Okay, you sound angry. Talk to me. Long what? Very. Talk to me. We don't want to get you angry. The last thing we want to do, Chris, is cause problems between you and Seth. I swear to God. Well, so I don't understand that, but let me help you with something. Okay. Okay, a lot of the information that I've been listening to on your show, coming from Chloe, the questions that are coming through people, is very sickening and disgusting, to be personally honest with you. Okay, let's let's talk about so, it. So let me go ahead and address a few things and help y'all out. Okay. So Chloe, you're the PI. I now listen, if you watch this interview from the beginning, and I'll put the link in the description. If you haven't watched this, seen this interview from the beginning at all, I advise you to go and watch it. Because Chloe... She doesn't say anything bad about Chris, okay? She does state that she reckons there's foul play. Right? Because she reckons that Sebastian could be alive and that he has rang off. But why would a 15-year-old, autistic 15-year-old, run away with no shoes on? Why? Something must have happened. He must have heard something. Something must have been said for him to do that. He must have felt scared to want to feel he needed to leave that house. Why? So that's all she's saying. Right? Now, foul play might mean they're withholding evidence. They're withholding something. And that's what she thinks. She she believes Katie is withholding something. She's not telling the whole truth. So she doesn't put Chris down at all. I haven't had a chance to talk to you. You haven't even called me. You ain't done anything, first off. Heather has Heather been is the only Right. Can I just say, there's two private investigators. There's Heather, and she comes on a little bit later. In a bit, I should say. And there's Chloe, right? Now, if you're speaking to, and they're both working together, they're not working singular, they're working together as a team, right? So if Chloe has information, she passes it to Heather. If Heather gets information, she passes it to Chloe, sort of thing, right? So if you've got one of the PIs contacting a, the parents, like the mother and the stepfather. You do not need the second PI phone up saying, oh, I'm just phoning up to make sure, can we do anything for you? Can we get you a nice cup of coffee? You know what I mean? You don't need two 
PI is phoning you up. You're better off working with one PI. Some you think gets mis got misjudged, missaid, whatever. And he's having a go at her because she's not being in touch with him. There's two of them. You don't need both PIs to get in touch with you. Grow up, man. One. Heather is the only one who has reached out to me or to my wife. I so actually you reached out to you um, a month or so ago. And that, you have, that you don't have all the answers to is a problem. Okay, well, Chris, Chris, help us understand because I know Chloe and Chloe wants to help. And the last thing Chloe would do is want to put out misinformation. And the problem so, okay, is... Okay, I understand it. So let me just smash something real quick. Okay. Okay, first... Can I point some out? Oh, she's changed the title. <laughs> Bless her. She changed it to Chloe P.I. and Chris Proud Food. <laughs> Misspelling, but we'll let her off. First and foremost, anything that goes on between me and my wife is not a damn bit of anybody's personal business. I don't care what you think. I don't care what y'all got to say. That'd be like me splashing all your business out to the world. Okay. It does not matter what goes on in my house. We're looking for my son. That's real simple. Your, your, your step's not right. Right. But if something has gone on in that house where Sebastian didn't feel safe and he has left his run, because I wouldn't say it was a planned thing. This was a spur of the moment. If this is the case, right? If he has left, this is a spur of the moment decision. Because he left with no shoes, no coat, no money, no phone, nothing. Now, if you're going to run away, I can make sure you have a bag with some snacks and juice or water. You can have some money, you can have your phone, you can have coat, and you can have your darn shoes. So if he has left, then he left because something was going on in that house which made him uncomfortable. Um, it doesn't matter. Steps on my son. All the kids are treated as if they're your own. There is no title a stepson, a son. It, no, it doesn't matter. That boy is loved by me. Oh, but when it comes to his family, right, and you're hearing a bit, a bit like that, it's his stepdad or his stepfather. It's not dad or father. It's stepdad or stepfather. Yet here it says, it's my son. And when anyone picks him up on it, it says, it's your stepson. It goes, it doesn't matter. We treat him all the same. Right? But when it comes to his own, it's his stepdad, stepfather. Be hypocritical. Just like he's my own. Just like he's my own. Okay, uh, Chris, let, let, may I ask you something? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. And, and let me tell you why people are asking uh, personal questions about you and your wife. Okay? It's, it's because of the situation in which Sebastian has gone missing and they're wondering if whatever happened between you and your wife does it have something to do with sebastian going missing i swear to you it's not to be nosy it's not to be rude it's just trying to figure out what happened to sebastian and okay so let me make, let me make this even crystal clear for you okay and everybody out there that's got all these negativity disgusting comments and questions that y'all think you know anything about when honestly you don't know a damn thing and that's yeah. the problem you assume you speculate all this crap, you have no idea what me, my family, my wife, everybody involved is going through. Who includes Seth, his mom, and everybody else. Okay. Because it's the vile, disgusting crap that comes out of people's mouth. Yes, I'm a very pissed off stepfather to this whole situation. Okay. And, and I... And this is because the questions wasn't being censored. Right? This is all because... People were speaking, they wanting to know answers to what they've heard, right? About the cemetery, about owning other houses, about owning other property, about whatever. They are asking the PI these questions so she can say, no, he doesn't have none of that, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. But I must admit... 
out of two PIs, I would have thought one, because he hasn't got these two PIs no more, out of the two, I thought, I thought one of them would have gone up to Alaska and made some, invest, done some investigations up there. You know what I mean? Because we don't know if the law enforcement have. We don't know. Because law enforcement aren't talking. Christ, it's deafening. We're being deafened by the law enforcement. And by that I mean deafened by the silence. They have gone so flipping quiet, it's unbelievable. I understand, and I hear what you're saying. But again, so let me help y'all some. Okay, y'all said some shit that's really y'all have no. It's really none of your damn business. But since you brought it up on the clearance, okay. My parents didn't go to Alaska two days after we went missing. I don't think well, anybody my parents said went that. to Alaska was because my stepfather went for work. Okay, nobody said they went two days after he went missing. Oh no, it's said. out there. Trust me, because I have. Okay, terabytes. I cannot say that. No, I said you. Okay. I said people. Okay. Now I have terabytes, terabytes. of videos. Of Seth on here saying some vile stuff. I've got videos of everybody and their comments out here. But Trust let's me, what I'm bringing to you is not that I'm just pulling stuff out of the air. I understand. No, and Chris, I'm glad you cleared that up. That's a so, good. By the way, they didn't go for a month. Okay. They went for two weeks. My stepdad went on business. My mom went with him, but it's really nobody's business. Well, but but Chris, let me, and and please understand. I swear to God, I'm coming from a place of understanding because I've been doing this for years. Okay. Here's the thing. When you ask the public for help, they're going to look at everything and try and figure out what happened to Sebastian. And let me tell them from an outsider looking in, it's okay. His parents left town shortly after. Was there a reason? Did he take, did they take Sebastian with him? It is speculation that I am sorry. It's hurtful to you. And I understand it. And that's why it's important that you clear it up. Just clear it up. Nobody's trying to be hurtful or mean. I promise you. We've all been asked to help find Sebastian. And this is what we do. We, we try and think outside the box. We try and ask questions and think outside the box. and think Well, actually, they come on. They did that one interview with Duchess first. And then they did an interview with the news people. I don't know if it's News Nation or whatever. I can't remember now. Or KWV4. Right, asking for help, asking for help. So when you come online, when you go online and sit there and ask for help from the public, you can't then turn and say, well, no, we don't want you to help. We don't want you that information. You can't go digging into our family, our background or whatever. That's the case. And she says here, when you come online, you are opening yourself up to everyone. Right? Everyone. They will dig. I know there's people on here that will dig into your marriage, your how, where you met, how you met, how long you've been together, how long you've been married. They can dig right back to the day you was flipping born. Right? They will pull up all any prison uh, police records. You name it. They will do it. Right? Because they feel, and I must admit, I agree in a way, I feel as well, that you need to know what that person is like in the family. Right? Right? So you need to know what they're like. How, what makes them tick, if you know what I mean. And then you can get a better understanding of that person. And that way, that is how you know when they're putting on a fake hunger. He's, he was putting on it so fake, it was unbelievable. In those first few interviews, he was so fake. And people was People picked up on on the first interview, right? 
They picked up on it on the first interview with Duchess. They picked up on it with the next interview with WV, whatever, Channel 4, whatever. They picked up on it there. I picked up on it, that one. I didn't know about the first interview with Duchess. Right? And I picked, I watched that interview with the news people, and I picked up on a lot of red flags. And after, after that interview, I watched it so many times, I was picking up on even more red flags. And that was just out of one interview. And then second interview come. Hold on. Change the story. Third interview. <sighs> change the story. Fourth interview. Oh my God, when will I stop changing the flipping story? You know what I mean? And I always say, if you're telling the truth, the story doesn't change. You only change the story, like add to it, because you think, hmm, did they believe me when I said that? No. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll add this bit to it. So they've got to believe me then. So you add a bit more, thinking, we out here, us Joe Blogs and Karens and whatever you want to call us, or keyboard warriors, <laughs> are going to fall for it. No, we don't. If she hadn't changed her story, we may have believed them. But she changed her story. So many flipping times we was getting dizzy. Figure out what has gone on. It is not thinking outside of the box. Mm -hmm. Does nothing but cause speculation. If it causes people to call in tips. That don't mean anything that you're taking sources away from the investigation because Joe Schmo down the street thinks that my family owns a cemetery. We own a funeral home. Like, where in the hell do you get up with this stuff? Okay. Not you. I'm saying the public. And so that, Chris, that's why it is great that you're here because we want to clear this up and help you this is get it up. And, and I'm going to tell you something, Chris. When it comes to the general public, they're always going to be calling in crazy tips and doing crappy things. And all we can do is say, that's not us. We are not doing that. But well, it doesn't and matter, I, do, I did want to clear it up. It does not matter. It doesn't I did matter clear what up, I Chris. Um, I did reach out to you on March 17th, publicly and privately. You responded to me publicly. You asked me to ask my question publicly. I did. You didn't respond. I reached out to you privately again. Um, so I have reached out to you. Where in the public? Where? Um, I reached out to you on Facebook. I reached out to you on Facebook Messenger privately. You've never read my message. Now, personally, as a PI, I think she should have found his phone number or his email. He either phoned him personally or emailed him. I don't think you should be using, as a PI, Facebook or Messenger or anything like that to get a message across to someone. But that's just me. Well, don't take this the wrong way, but... A lot of the bullshit that I get in Facebook. No, that's fine. That's I'm, fine. I'm not, I just want to make yeah. it clear. Can, can, that I, can I, I explain to you? Yeah. You send me messages along with thousands of other people. I understand that. And that's why I took it public. And you did respond to me and ask me to ask my question publicly because you wanted whatever answer you were going to give to be public to clear it what up. What was I the question, question that you asked me? Since I neglected your question. And I, what, that's not what I'm question. saying. That's not what I'm saying. I, I'm just, I want to make it clear that I haven't um, not tried to reach out to you. Uh, can, and Chris, can, I know you're mad. I, I, God, I can feel it. I can hear it. And I understand it. You've got to believe me when I tell you this. Please, if you can, can dial it back a bit and get us some of these answers and let us help you clear up this bull so it doesn't interfere anymore. And like I said, you're always going to have crazy people interfering and, and coming up with rumors. And it's so maddening and frustrating. And I hate it. It pisses me off more than anything. And anybody that knows me knows that. <laughs> it pisses you off? You're not in our shoes. I know. You haven't I, been in our shoes. Okay, well, you don't know that, but but I haven't been in your shoes and missing a child, no. But believe me, I can understand what you're going through. And let, what I'm saying is we can help you, Chris. We can help you, all right? Anybody here in this chat that asked about the cemetery, it's because somebody else brought it up. Just tell us. Exactly, and, and my question comes back to where do these people come up with this crazy crap? I, that's a million-dollar question. I don't know. Yeah, online. Let's clear it up. <laughs> let's let's clear it up for you. Let us help you. You're saying, 
you're, I believe Chloe, you're saying online. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm sorry. I said that. There's a lot That's of Stacey. crazy no. people online. And just to let you know, I, and I understand you get a lot, a lot of messages. I reached out to you when Sebastian first went missing, too, to see if we could help in any way. So. Yeah, but Chris, I understand your anger. But I'm telling you, please let us help. I reached out to him. I sent a Facebook invite. He didn't accept it. Thank God. Okay, we're not here to to point fingers at you or, or whatever, but the problem is, and this is what we were talking about earlier, Chris, when we when the public is asked to help and then no information is provided, then people, because of social media, and social media is here to stay, unfortunately, this never used to be a problem, never, until social media, and it's terrible. I will be the first one to admit it's terrible, but let us help you clear it up, okay? So you don't own a cemetery and you don't own a funeral home, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so, okay, everybody, stop with that bullshit. All right. Here, let me add this to the thing. I, we don't own a private plane. We don't own 78 pieces of property. Mm -hmm. We don't own a private yacht. What else do you guys want to come up saying that we own? Like we're millionaires or something. Like we've got this money growing off trees, which, by the way, it'd be great if we did, because I guarantee we wouldn't need anybody's help because he'd have been home by now. Right. No, I understand. No, I, I no, That's what got me. Right. If they had this money, all this money that people say they've got by having yachts and 78 house season, you name it. They wouldn't be in this position, position now because he'd be home right now. How would you be home now if you had that money? How can you say, doesn't matter how much money you got, how can you say if you had all this money that were people are making out that you've got, he would be home by now? Has someone got him? Is someone holding him as a ransom? You know what I mean? Because why would you say that? Right? Let's listen to it again. Let's see if I can just go back there. But I haven't been in your shoes and missing a child, no. But believe me, I can understand what you're going through and let what I'm saying is we can help you, Chris. We can help you, all right? Anybody here in this chat that asked about a cemetery, it's because somebody else brought it up. Just tell us. Exactly. And, and my question comes back to where do these people come up with this crazy crap? I, that's a million dollar question. I don't know. Yeah, online. Let's clear it up. <laughs> let's, let's clear it up for you. Let us help you. You're saying, you're, I believe, Chloe, you're saying online. Is that what you're saying? No, that's I'm sorry. Crazy. I said that. There's a lot of Stacey. crazy yeah. people online. And just to let you know, I, and I understand you get a lot, a lot of messages. I reached out to you when Sebastian first went missing too to see if we could help in any way. So, yeah, but Chris, I understand your anger, but I'm telling you, please let us help you. Okay, we're not here to to point fingers at you or or whatever. But the problem is, and this is what we were talking about earlier, Chris. When we when the public is asked to help and then no information is provided, then people because of social media and social media is here to stay. Unfortunately, this never used to be a problem. Never until social media, and it's terrible. I will be the first one to admit it's terrible, but let us help you clear it up, okay? So you don't own a cemetery and you don't own a funeral home, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so, okay, everybody, stop with that bullshit, all and, right? And, here, let me add this to the thing. I, we don't own a private plane. We don't own 78 pieces of property. Mm -hmm. We don't own a private yacht. What else do you guys want to come up saying that we own? Like we're millionaires or something, like we've got this money growing off trees, which, by the way, it'd be great if we did, because I guarantee we wouldn't need anybody's help, because he'd have been home by now. Right. No, I understand. No, I, I completely understand. Okay. But understand, when the public is asked to help with social media, this is what social media does. And it can be your, it can be your... Worst uh, nightmare. Or your best friend. Yes. And let us help it. And I can I can give you examples. I can have you talk to people that have said, yes, the people at WebSleuths, they've helped us. They've been great. Okay. Yes. And But hey, guys, I understand why Chris is angry. Because it's coming 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Horrible okay. crap about him, okay, and his family. I get the anger. So we're going to help you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let my cat out before she drives everybody crazy. So I apologize. So hang on. Um, Chloe, is there anything you'd like to say while I, I let my cat out I mean, before she drives um, me nuts? I, I will ask the question. I'll actually read you the message I sent you. Um, so I, this was March 17th. Um, Good afternoon, Chris. I wrote this in a chat you're involved with, but I'm worried it may be lost because there's so much chatter. 
First, let me say I'm a Tennessee crisis investigator and have been praying and actively bringing awareness to Sebastian from day one. His heart is near, or his case is near and dear to my heart. I had a question. I know Sebastian went to his dad's every other weekend or so. Did you come home on those weekends? Not a specific date, but just in general. Or did Katie come and stay with you? Are you often gone during the week? Just curious about Sebastian's day-to-day -day dynamic with his parents. And then I messaged you again after I posted that question publicly. You asked me to post it publicly, and I did, and then I wasn't answered. And I said, hey, Chris, just messaging again. So it'll be at the top. I know you said you get a ton of messages. So, and again, we understand that you get a ton of messages. We absolutely understand that. Is there somebody else in our chat room? I can't see it. Heather. Heather, do you want to come up? I, I guess she does. I'm here. Oh, she is? Okay. Oh, hi, Heather. I didn't see you there. Hi. Okay. There was a lot um, of talk. I, I didn't really have a chance to say hello. And this, Heather is the other private investigator. Yeah, I know who Heather is. Okay. Heather, would you like to say anything? Well, um, so I spoke with them earlier today, and um, and obviously, as you know, um, Mr. Cropfoot did message me and ask for a number so he could come in. And I think that it is um, past due. I think that it's a good thing for Mr. Proudfoot to address some of the um, allegations that are being made. Um, I would like to have the opportunity, you know, like I said to him earlier today, it's good for us, Chloe and I, to have access to them to be able to, when we get this information, instead of having to go around them to other sources to try to get the answers to the, the, those questions, to actually be able to come to him uh, for those answers and try to clear them up directly. So I'm glad he's here. I really am. Even though he's oh, angry, I am too. I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely angry, thrilled. I, I'm glad he's here. And I've spoken to him before and he's been very upset with me before. But once he calms down, um, I, I think we'll, maybe we can get, get somewhere. Maybe we can get somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So let's address something real quick with your okay. peers who say I'm drunk and belligerent. No, I'm just a pissed off dad. So let's get that real clear. Hey, everybody, if any, okay, uh, mods. So if you want to keep your comments and, you, and that's how your audience wants to play this game, no, 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 then okay. no, I'm not going to clear up anything or turn the chat off. If you want to clear this up, let's get it right. And let's okay. take all the stupid people out of this equation and answer the deals. Okay, Chris, I, hang on. Mods, if anybody says anything rude about any of our guests, I want you to ban them. Kick them out, okay? It's like this. If you ain't got nothing factual about me to say, keep your mouth shut. Well, okay, but Chris, they don't know if it's factual. Exactly. Okay. So that's, that's the best recommendation I can give them. Well, but they want to ask questions, and let me tell you why. Questions are one thing, not a statement where I'm belligerent and I'm drunk, because guess what, folks? I could read the comments that you post. I know, and I'm telling everybody, if anybody says anything rude, they're booted from chat. Moss, if you could boot them. Uh, Stacy, could you get Ping over here to help us? Anybody and, and the other part of this is, oh, if, it's nothing, it. if it's nothing in regards to Sebastian, I really don't give a shit, people. No, and I agree, Chris. And I mean, I don't know if you heard. Um, I didn't want to discuss... Oh, I asked a lot of questions and she wouldn't discuss it. Um, Absolutely. I, I think it's semantics at this point. Um, he's been missing for two months and I, I don't know how his bathroom habits are going to help me find him. Exactly. Exactly. Mind you that children with autism do have bladder and bowel movement issues to control themselves, but yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not really worried that people can't read and do their own. Well, but, and, but uh, Chris, let me, let me tell you. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and care about that either. Let me tell you why that was brought up. Okay. It's because of what Seth said. Seth said at yes. his house. He didn't yes, you are correct. No, no, no. You are correct. You just hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. You just hit the nail on the head. Seth has opened his mouth. He has said a lot of things he probably shouldn't. And he needs to learn how to close it because quite honestly, none of that has anything to do with finding Sebastian. Right. And and you know what? But but Chris, let's let's keep it that way because Seth has said he is not going to do that anymore and he hasn't. Bullshit. Let me explain to you why. That, okay. sa that Sunday when I went to that vigil and spoke to Seth very calmly, very respectfully, we were having a good conversation while everybody stood behind me and would snap the little pictures and stuff. Heather came up in the conversation. She saw us. It was not an aggressive conversation. It was actually a good one. Mm -hmm. But see, right. it wasn't three hours later. Seth was on YouTube on somebody else's show sitting that he's blaming Katie, my wife, for Sebastian's disappearance. Mm -hmm. Now, unless you got cold hard facts which you don't, don't open your mouth. Because all you're doing is making an ass out of yourself because you're assuming. Say that everybody is grieving and handling the situation differently. Um, I won't comment on if I agree with any of the ways that people are acting at this point. Um, I, I do think, you know, in the last week, we've been trying to build a bridge 
And I know it's difficult and it's not going to be just clean and perfect, but I think if we can all just refocus and try to not focus on the other things people have done that make you angry. Um, so here, let me, let me explain to y'all something sure. that y'all don't get a chance to see because unfortunately we're meeting on a very bad circumstance. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Seth can contest to this. So Seth, Seth comes up to me, he gets his job in the security forms. He wants to be law enforcement. He has had a dream of being law enforcement since I have known him. Okay. There was a chance for something that came up and I called him and said, look, I think you should apply for this. I think you'd be great at it, which is the job he currently has. Okay. Now he goes to the, he gets accepted. He's excited. He calls me and says, thank you, man. I really appreciate, appreciate you helping me that I have been a supporter and a cheerleader for him this whole time. Okay. But y'all don't get to see that. And Seth's not going to tell you that. During the middle of the training, Seth decided one day he wants to call me and tell me he doesn't think he's going to complete it. But I told him, I said, look, you're going to sit there and you're going to go back in and you're going to complete this training because your son thinks you hang the moon and the sun. So you need to go in there and prove to your son that dreams and goals can be met. Mm -hmm. I have right. been very, very supportive of him trying to do these things. I have told him on Sunday, I supported him then, I would support him now. But I will not stand by and watch somebody be straight up disrespectful and accuse people and say things that have absolutely no bearing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, well, again, I, I just, if I could just yeah, step in. I mean, Chris. His problem is, right? No, I don't understand where he's coming from because he's protecting Katie. Yes, I can understand that. It's his wife, right? But it's like no one is allowed to say anything about her, right? Now, he doesn't like the fact that apparently after the vigil or whatever, he did a live with someone. I can't remember who now. And he brought up the fact that he thinks Katie is holding back on something. He's not accusing her of something. He's just saying she's holding back. Like I'm here. She's not accused Katie of anything. She just reckons... Katie's holding back on some information. But as soon as anyone says anything like that about Katie, he goes off on one. He does not like it. Now it's like that's his way of trying to control people in my eyes. You can say what you like, just don't talk about my wife. Excuse me? Your wife was the last person to see Sebastian, to speak to Sebastian, right? She's the last one. So why can't we talk about your wife? Because I'll tell you now, Chris, and I've said it on many times, when it comes to the push, are you going to go, go down for her? Are you going to go stick by her side and say, yeah, she didn't do nothing, she didn't do nothing, no, 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 it wasn't her, it wasn't her, and stick by her side. Or are you going to, yeah, I'll tell you the truth, officer, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Because will you want to go down for her, for something she's done? Because you was at work, was you not? You are going on, you are telling us a story that she has told you. Right? She told you what happened and you've made up this narrative that you've got her and everyone else to stick by. This is what we say. We don't go off it. We, this is our line. We went to bed. You went out some You did this, this, this and this. You come home. You put the trash out. You played in his room. You went to bed at nine. You woke up at six in the morning and he was gone. That's the narrative. Right? Don't waver off that. We, you'll be all right. But as soon as anyone, anyone 
says anything about Katie holding back on the on what she's on what she knows. He flips it. He literally flips it. Right? Now I'm going to go up a bit further. Because I know Seth can the, the, the reason the reason why I asked so that, I will go on. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely free well, the, and a website the, is as well. Well no right. So the reason why website. the reason why I'm asking that question. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is because if people are true to what they say in their heart, especially mm-hmm. those and they know who I'm talking about, the clickers, yeah. the shows that make this money. Yep. I would love for you to make a public announcement for every dollar you've made. If you truly do this for your for the goodness of your heart, every dollar that you have made, you should donate it to the call. Is he asking the newspapers and the news age uh YouTubers like News Nation uh News Nation, uh WSMV4, I think it's WSMV4, uh and all those to donate what they have earned off their video off their lives they've done. Is he? No. Right? So I think he's got a nerve to say that. A lot of people put a lot of time and effort into doing their lives. A lot of time and effort. Right? They don't just sit like, I'm not monetized. I'm not. So they don't just sit on their backsides like me and just go on the internet and do the searches that way. But there are times when we have got to pay for certain information. Like, uh, sometimes it might be information about a court case or something like that. And you have to pay for it. Right, so why should we not make some money? We don't make, believe me, you've got thousands and thousands of people, subscribers, and the only way a YouTube channel can keep going a lot of the time is by those who pay, like memberships, because you don't get paid a lot from YouTube, right, for every pound you earn, right, so say someone uh, gives you a super chat of, say, I don't know, two dollars, okay, you get one forty. $1.40. $1.40. Because you only get 70% of a dollar. They take 30% off you straight away through every super chat, every whatever. That's why a lot of YouTubers have um, PayPal or Venmo or Cash App. So people can donate to their channel that way that way they get the full money but then today i was listening to one of these youtubers you know these youtubers that uh, just go on there and just ever just shout about other youtubers right and she's they're talking about um wish lists on amazon now she said she put a wish list together because Certain people would rather buy you something, right? So that way they know where their money is going, which is fair enough, right? And she was saying how she was getting ripped to pieces for putting her wish list up. She don't do it no more. But other YouTubers were ripping her to pieces. Now... If the time comes and someone said to me, and I'm hanging up people say, would you put a wish list together so we can buy you something rather than doing out cash? I go, yeah, okay, but I won't publicly do it. I'll make one up, and if you want one, please ask me, and I'll send it you. I'll send you the link. But I wouldn't publicly put it out there on my page or anything. They'd have to ask me if I've got a wish list. Like, today, I know it's nothing. Like, Someone put a comment up today on one of my videos and they said, have you got X? I went, yeah, here it is. Here's my X account. Right? So hopefully she'll follow me on X now as well. So 
that is how I'd work a wish list if I've got ever, ever put one together for this channel. Right? And if it was, it would be stuff I need to keep my channel going. But at the moment, I don't need anything. I really don't. Right? Apart from, from paint, maybe to paint the inside of my balcony and some MDF to put around the side. And stuff like that. But that's work in progress for me. But otherwise, I wouldn't put. A, I wouldn't personally put my wish list. Oh God, my cat's in the kitchen. She's just going me for. It's just going me for. It's sitting on my windowsill in the kitchen, and I can see it from my balcony into my kitchen. And he's sitting there staring at me. And I'm thinking, it's freaked me out. Then, All right? I know what he wants. He wants some food. Anyway, so so people do that as well, put wish lists out. But otherwise, you don't make a lot of money off YouTube. They take 30% of everything anyone pays you. Right? And then you have to wait till the end of the month or whenever for them to pay you. So it's not a lot. So he's saying people, you're making a lot of money on YouTube. You're not. You're really not. Awesome. Not to your personal gain. Right. But, yeah, we don't, like but, I said, we make zero money. It costs us money, too. And I appreciate it, and I respect yeah. that. Thank you, all ladies, for that. I will give you that. So, but no, I understand what you're saying. But again, it's just like with, you know, Nancy Grace or with news media, they report the news. Unfortunately, this is social media. And I agree, there's people out there, and I'm not going to even say their names, but they know who they are. They do this crap to get clickbait so they can make mm -hmm. more money, and it's disgusting. Absolutely. Oh, very much so. Very much so. And, and I want to add something to that. Like I told Chris earlier, everybody that's involved in this case is under a microscope. I've been ripped to shreds. Um, they've been ripped to shreds. Seth has been ripped to shreds. I mean, like the public gets a hold of somebody in the spotlight and they dig into them and they pull up anything that they can about them. And and some of it's true and some of it's not. Um, it doesn't help find Sebastian. And that's where we all need to get on the same page and regroup and just make the decision right here, right now to ignore the rumors, to clear up misinformation and just to get on track so that we can start trying to find Sebastian. Yeah. Right. If we can keep parties involved in this investigation, focused on that and staying off of YouTube and other aspects of social media, and playing the game okay yes i'm sure we would all benefit greatly and this would completely change narratives and the direction and it would straight focus completely on sebastian well let's do this 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 call this this podcast or uh web sleuth podcast that we're on right now we can make a pact right now that's what we're doing right here right but here. i need but here's the other thing i i appreciate you want to make that pact, but you know exactly who i'm referring to that needs to be done publicly as well then. Well, all we can do is what we can do here True. tonight. So, okay. but but Chris, there's a couple of questions and then there is somebody, else, well, there is somebody that wants to come on the panel and I don't know if you want them on here, but I'll ask, well, let me ask you these questions first, okay? Everybody mm -hmm. wants to know, what do you think happened to Sebastian? What do you think happened? I don't know. For the love of God, I wish I had an answer. I wished oh. we had something to go off of. So, but we Chris, don't. I asked Seth this a few weeks ago, and mm -hmm. so just um, no thought you go. in your gut, spit it out. Doesn't matter if it sounds completely off the wall. What is your knee-jerk reaction to what happened? Sebastian walked out of the house, stepped off the porch, and has vanished into thin air. That is what I think, because that is what I know. But what do you mean you know? Um, I've been part of the investigation since day one. Okay. And if anybody else out there that's got some information in regards to where Sebastian has went, because last time right, I checked, are, there's are not one shred of evidence. You know he walked off the porch is what I'm asking. I'm telling you, unless he, unless this kid is just in the thin air on my front porch, he sure had to go somewhere. So he had to walk off the front porch. Now, if you're trying to insinuate somebody was in my house or no, somebody's taking that child outside of my house, no, 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 say I'm not that. Insinuating anything? I'm saying, I'm asking, do you do you know that he walked out your front door? Do you know that he went out the front door or any door? Is that what you're asking? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're asking. Okay, thank you. I just need a confirmation. I don't play games here. So, just to make this real crystal clear, there's a back door. 
every door in the house when Katie got up that morning was locked. Okay. Since it's already out there, there's a keypad on the front door. You don't need a key to unlock and lock my front door. Mm -hmm. But you need a key to lock every other door. And every other door was locked, folks. So did, Kate, did Katie do that? Do did, walk out, did Katie make sure all the other doors were locked and could have Sebastian just walked out? Could he have walked out the front door? Every door was locked. So what you're saying is that the only possibility is the front door. Is that what you're saying? I am saying the most conceivable way possible that this makes sense is that he walked out the front door. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Did he walk out without his shoes on? Is that what you believe? My statement earlier is real simple. Sebastian walked out of the house not wearing any shoes. Could he have been running and scared of something? Um, don't know. He could. It's a young boy. It's dark outside. God only knows. Okay. Now, there is somebody that has been asking to come on. And uh, Gray Hughes, he would like to talk to you. Would you like you can to? Bring that, you can bring that man on board because I've talked to him. I respect him and I will talk to him. Uh, Gray, I just sent you the Facebook link. So jump on up. Okay, Gray. I just sent it to your Facebook. So he'll be jumping on here shortly. Um, Stacy, can you keep an eye out? Because I can't see because of my stupid computer. Hey, okay. in the meantime, um, I would like to, since Chris is here and this has become very public, um, I would like to mention something that we spoke about earlier. Um, they, Chris and Katie did actually confirm that the clothes that he was wearing at Texas Roadhouse that night were accounted for. And I believe they were um, the articles of clothing that were used for the scent dog. Am I correct when I say that, Chris? Yes, those clothes are in the possession of law enforcement. Great. And so do we know what Sebastian was wearing when he left? From the house that night? Yes. The description is still the same. It hasn't changed from 60 days ago. However, I will say this much. Some of the information that's out on some of these posters and flyers, we have actually requested to have some of that changed, but it hasn't happened. So I'll walk you through what the description actually should be. Sebastian was wearing long black pants. Think of the 1970s style Adidas style pants. You had different mm -hmm. stripes down the side. That style of pants on. He had a long sleeve shirt, not a sweatshirt, okay. not a hoodie, a long sleeve shirt. On the front of that shirt is probably one of three depictions Halloween, Star Wars. Oh, God, God. I hate this guy. Okay. Chris, um, I know, I know that Sebastian it's, didn't it's, have it's, very many pairs yeah. of shoes because his feet were growing and Katie would toss them out pretty quickly. Um, after he grew out of them, but it, it is there a reason we can't confirm which shirt if it's just one of three? I didn't say one of three. I said one is of there three any depictions on a shirt. Male YouTuber. Okay, so to. that's so for different shirts, right? Say again. I'm sorry. So I, I don't know if we're saying the same thing or something different, but are you saying there's three different possible shirts he was wearing? Like he had three different black long sleeve shirts. One had Halloween no, on no. it. One no, had no. Minecraft. I'm on telling it. you. No, it's not what I'm saying. Okay. I said he had a long sleeve black shirt on. And on that shirt had one of three depictions. I didn't say he had three. I didn't say anything. I just said one. Okay. Right. But, I, but I'm just confused by how um, have you not been able to identify which of those three depictions is missing? Um, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Can you tell me every single shirt in your closet right now and everything that's No, but if I had okay, to choose between right. three but wait a minute, of wait a minute. them, if well, I hold on a minute. between three of them, I could. You're saying three of them. But I'm telling well, you. Well, you listed three things. I'm just confused. I listed what could possibly be on the shirt. Okay, can I, can I jump in and try to interpret a little bit here? Okay, so, um, so are you saying that all three of those shirts are not accounted for, or are you saying you don't remember which depiction it was that was on that shirt? Does that make sense? Is that a little bit clearer? Say it one more time, you broke up. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so are you saying that um, you don't remember what the depiction was, it was one of those three things, or are you saying there are three different shirts with those depictions and, and all three of those shirts are unaccounted for? I'm not saying he had three shirts with three different depictions on them. That's not what I said. I'm telling you, I don't know what exactly was on the front of the shirt. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay, so Sebastian's okay. clothes mostly consist of if it has a picture on it, one of the three things. Those are his three favorite things. Okay, so what you're saying is Minecraft. Has, you know, multiple Minecraft shirts, multiple Star Wars shirts, multiple Halloween shirts. So it's likely he had a shirt that had one of those things on, but there's not just three of those shirts. I'm telling you that he had a long sleeve shirt on with one of the three depictions on it. That's it. 
Okay. I'm not well, telling well, you any more shirts. I'm not telling. So I'm not I know what you're asking. I'm just trying to understand. I, I understand that, but you're asking me if he had three different, three different long sleeve shirts with three different pictures on it. And no, I I'm think I understand you, what you're explaining. Like, so he had he, Sebastian had multiple shirts that had a Minecraft graphic on it. Sebastian had multiple shirts that had Halloween. Sebastian had multiple shirts that had Star Wars. I guess maybe several of them were long sleeve and black. So you so, can't. So identify. here, let's just let's just make this very simple. Okay. He had a long sleeve black shirt on with a picture on the front of it. Okay. There you go. And that and that obviously is what you got from Katie, correct? Yes. Okay. Everybody, um, Gray Hughes is here, and people are saying, why is Gray here? I will tell you. <laughs> well, is Gray, yeah. I, I consider okay. Gray someone that I like. Gray helped me in the beginning. When I started this, he was very kind. Gray Hughes is there because he's a good, good. he just gets some good information. But he's there because he's pally pally with Chris, right? And he's probably thinking, Chris is outnumbered there with four women. I'll see if I can get up there to give him some support. That's why he's there. No one likes him. He knows him. To me, I know it's a shock, but he was. It was very sweet. A shock. I asked, I, I, he knows I'm kidding him. And right. I asked Chris, is it okay if Gray Hughes comes up? And Chris said yes. So, Gray, I'm going to turn it over to you now, please, sir. Yeah, I just want to say I've, I've talked to Chris and, um, you know, the way he's sounding right now is exactly how I think I would sound or anybody else would sound given the attacks being leveled. Um, I've, when I talked to him on the phone, we talked on the phone, we messaged back and forth, but you know, we talked for got like an hour one time and literally went over detail by detail on where the, the light video was taken, you know, the, the flashlights, you mm -hmm. know, exactly where that was filmed. We went over where the dog scented and, all, and, and I kept sending him the map and he would show me the route and everything. And it was like, to me, he seems like somebody who's literally out there trying to figure something out. I know my opinion isn't like all the rest of the people out there. Uh, I mean, I've never seen anything like this. It, it kind of reminds me of like the, remember? Uh... Right. Now he's going by what Chris told him about the dogs. Right, with the scent. Now, I just get baffled by that. Because if Sebastian went that way, sorry, but if he, he went that way, there are so many. Yeah, I'll take you to it. I don't know what I've done with Google, but it's a lot better. Right, I'm going to take you to it. Right. Have they updated it? No, they haven't updated it because I still the same. Right. Now, this is where this is where they live. That right. And he said the dogs went from the porch round here, round here, round the back of the house, down here, and along to the corner. Right. Then from the corner, it's gone up this road, and we're going to go and place our little man on this road from that corner, from there. Uh, now, we're on Killing Lane, and apparently the dog's trapped from round their house, round the back of their house, round here, up here. Now, some of the houses are blurred. Don't know why that is. Well, that's the house that lives, which is directly behind um, Chris Proudfoot's house. Why they blurred it out, I don't know, because everyone knew. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it's gone up these houses. And let's have a look. There's got to be cameras somewhere on these houses. Is there a ring doorbell? I think that's a ring doorbell. It's not going to let me go in any further. Let me just see if I can get from that angle and go in. Come out. Oh, 
God's sake. Right, I need to go back down. Thank you. Let's see if we can get any closer. That, does that look like a wooden doorbell there? Right. That looks like a wooden doorbell. So there's a the wooden doorbell. Right. I'm just about to kill my cat. Uh, there's cameras all along this road. Because if you listen to that full dispatch call, the full one, which I will try and find, and when I do, I will put it up on... Now, this is 2007, for some reason. And now we've gone to 2023, 2007. This house here, which is blurred out, is the neighbour. She calls... I wouldn't call them a neighbour. Right? A neighbour to me is someone who lives either side of me or opposite me. You know what I mean? That's a neighbour. Right? If someone had come to me and said, do, uh, do you know this family three houses down? I go, no, I don't. I don't. Right? I knew a family for a little bit down, like my road when I lived in Birmingham wasn't very long. So I knew a family who lived down like just before the corner. Right? Because their sons, her sons went to school with my son. And my daughter, right? And, um, but I wouldn't call them my neighbour. I'd say, oh, that's a friend of mine. But I wouldn't say neighbour. My neighbours are who live to the right, to the left, and say, right, left to me, in front of me, right? So I wouldn't call this woman here a neighbour. She calls herself a neighbour. She's on a different road, right? Anyway, he's come all the way up here. All the way up. All the way up. Right. And this is all open now. Right, because this is where the work site is all over here. And it's gone that way. Right. Well, it's not going to let us go there. See, but let us go there now. Before, it used to. But it stopped just going down there now. But, so, is missed all these houses on these, ha these cameras on these houses, and you're telling me there's no cameras on these houses? Let's have a look. Let's have a look, shall we? Bit blurry, you can't really see. Can't really see on this because this is 2007 viewing. But you're telling me, oh, come on. On these houses, there's no cameras. So he's managed to get all the way up this road, all the way up here, from this corner down here. Right? From this corner, where is it? Here. From here, all the way there, up there. And we know this house has got a camera. We know that much. Because there it is, guys and girls. There it is. Right? So you telling me he's managed to get past all those cameras without being seen. Right? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Sorry. He's not Houdini. He's not some miracle worker. Right? He's not. He's going to get caught on cameras. Too many houses, too many cameras. And as I said, if you listen to the dispatch call, the full dispatch call, and when I find it, I will put it on my community page. And now I've also got an account with uh, something called Thread. And it's part of the Instagram. So I will be posting it on there, on my Thread page. So, I will... Go through it, listen to it, get a notepad and paste or piece of paper and a pencil or whatever, and jot down and listen to the number of houses they call out. 
and what they say about each house. Right? So I'll find that full audio again. I will go through it. Just like um, Chloe did. I'll write all the numbers down that they call out with the houses with either door, window, bell or whatever, or some sort of footage. Right? And then I'll map it on here. And you can, they're trying to tell us that he's managed to get past all those cameras. And there's a lot. And as you said, there might be even more because this was just the first 11 minutes of the di dispatch call. So what about the rest of the houses they went to? You know what I mean? The houses are the other on this place, hang on, which is, on here it doesn't show, doesn't show that much on here at the moment. But we do know it's more, like, I know for a fact there's houses here. Right? There's houses all here. This house is here. All these houses here. This house is finished. This house is here. Uh, all along here. Up here. Right. Uh, and there's houses along here. Alright. Uh, so I know there's more houses. So ha have they got CCTV, uh, wing doorbell from all of them houses? There's got to be more. Yeah, apparently this cat kid managed to go from here, from here, right, all the way up, all the way up this road, all the way up this road, all the way up. And as I said, this is now construction site. This is all construction site. And he's managed to come in here over to, I believe the retention pond is somewhere around here. Here or something like that. Over here or there. Right, I do know there's a retention pond, I believe, at the bottom here. You can actually see it there. So, but he's managed to get past all those houses and all those cameras. So unless the police, law enforcement are holding back on, on us, which they have every right to do so, especially if, it's a, if it is a criminal case, because they talked about that in this interview that we're looking at before Chris come on. And they said then... Right, but I'm going to skip past this guy. I don't like this guy. I really don't. He's still on. Still on. Come on, get him off. Uh, I know Seth comes on. Very That's what they're yes, asking. Okay. Yes, and here's why they're asking that question. No, you're not going to find pictures of us out there doing this because mm -hmm. it's real simple. We, all three parents, initially were told in the beginning not to go out and search that we needed to be available to talk to law enforcement. Right. Yeah. Seth has been out there searching and doing his thing. He's had a bunch of people following him, whether or not he chose that or they, these people decided to do it on their own accord. That's not for me to say, but we, Katie and I are not going to have some big massive search party following us around with a bunch of people that were already threatened death threats, by the way, to us. You know, I, I'm not doing that. If you were in my shoes, you'd do the same thing. You listen to law enforcement. You do what they tell you to do. Yes, we're out there putting up signs. Yes, we're out there putting up flyers. Yes, we are searching. Chris, I'm sorry. Did you just say you guys are getting death threats? Yes, we've been getting death threats. And they have been reported to the TBI. Everything gets forwarded, screenshot, and sent straight, straight to them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Why did she ask that question? Because apparently law enforcement has said no reports of any threats or death threats, um, stalking, harassment, nothing has been coming to them. Yet he has just himself 
say he's had death threats and yes, they have been reported. Okay, everyone, I have Seth on my phone, on my JBL speaker. Uh, Seth, I want to give you a chance to talk uninterrupted. So please go ahead. Here he goes. All right. Uh, mainly, Chris, the communication needs to be a little bit more prompt. Um, uh, if I send you an email on Monday and Tuesday, I, I'm not I'm not willing to wait a week to get a response back. I mean, that's unacceptable when we're trying to find Sebastian, buddy. I understand what you're saying. I respect that. But when it comes to you asking people to come into my house on my property, who I don't know, Adam from E, and I really don't care what certification, who can vouch for these people. I don't care. I'm going to do exactly what I have always been doing. You send that to me, okay, well, I'm going to review it, and then we're going to send it to law enforcement. Chris. Let law enforcement go that route, and then when law enforcement comes in. Hold, hold, hold on, Chris, hold on one second. Hold on. Seth, what did you say? I said the person to be our spokesman to speak for all three of us doesn't need to be on your property. Okay, but Chris. Yeah, you're you have spoken you're very correct. to him. I have spoken to him. When? And I'm going to make this public. I am back working, and I have work hours. I also have to sleep, and unfortunately, oh. I'm on the opposite schedule of you. So respect that. I will do what I can as I can Chris? when I can. I'm sorry, Seth, go ahead. When did you speak with him, Chris? What has that got to do with finding Sebastian? If he's going to be a spokesperson, I was just asking when you spoke with him. I haven't come up with an answer yet. We spoke with him. We told him we'll get back with him after we've done some consideration and talk with law enforcement. We'll get back to him and we'll let him know our, our decision. So, uh, and all Seth is asking is when did he speak to this, as we know, is Tony, right? TikTok Tony, but he's been very quiet lately as well. And that's all he's asking. When did you speak to him? Not what did you say to him. When? So you see how he danced around that question again? Um, I, think I know you're on board with that. I do. I mean, I know you're a thousand percent on board. With Mr. Mathis, I got that. I'm not taking that away from you. So, Chris, um, I understand like every marriage is different in um, husband wife aspect. Um, you, you seem very protective of Katie and um, her having conversations with or without you. Um, but I, like I said before you came on, I do believe that Katie is the one who and I'm not saying it's because she knows what happened to Sebastian, but she was the last person that was with him. And so she does hold the most information, at least up until the point that he went missing. What information um, do you think she holds? Well, I'm going to get to that. Well, then do me a favor. Let's just get to it. Okay. Um, Don't so, pour gravy on the mashed potatoes. Just serve the stuff up. Chris, I'm, I'm really trying to be respectful. And this is a very... I'm, I am too. So please just get to it. Okay. No, so you're, you're we right. would really love to hear from Katie about his body language that day. Um, you know, we've heard from others who are, are, you know, not necessarily good sources about his body language at the bowling alley and his body language here and there. And so we're just really trying to pick up on Sebastian's mood because it could help us understand what led to him walking away off the front porch out the front door. Well, that is something that if she decides to answer, that's on her. But what I know is even on video, Sebastian was having a great day. He was in a great mood. He got to go to BJ's. He had a colossal popcorn. He hung out with family. He went. Hold on. I just realized that. He said it, something about on video. Your spokesman to speak for all three of us doesn't need to be on your property. Okay. But you you correct. have spoken you very correct. to him. I have spoken to him. When? And I'm going to make this public. I am back working and I have work hours. I also have to sleep. And unfortunately, oh. I'm on the opposite schedule of you. 
So respect that. I will do what I can as I can when I can. I'm sorry, Seth, go ahead. When did you speak with him, Chris? What has that got to do with finding Sebastian? If he's going to be our spokesperson, I was just asking when you spoke with him. I haven't come up with an answer yet. We've spoke with him. We told him we'll get back with him after we've done some consideration and talk with law enforcement. We'll get back to him and we'll let him know our, our decision. So um, I, think I know you're on board with that. I do. I mean, I know you're a thousand percent on board with Mr. Mathis. I got that. I'm not taking that away from you. So, Chris, um, I understand like every marriage is different and um, husband wife aspect. Um, you, you seem very protective of Katie and um, her having conversations with or without you. Um, but I, like I said before you came on, I do believe that Katie is the one who. And I'm not saying it's because she knows what happened to Sebastian, but she was the last person that was with him. And so she does hold the most information, at least up mm -hmm. until the point that he went missing. What information um, do you think she holds? Well, I'm going to get to that. Well, then do me a favor. Let's just get to it. Okay. Um, Don't so, pour gravy on the mashed potatoes. Just serve the stuff up. Chris, I'm, I'm really trying to be respectful. And this is a very- I, I am too. So please just get to it. Okay. No, so we would really love to hear from Katie about his body language that day. Um, you know, we've heard from others who are, are, you know, not necessarily good sources about his body language at the bowling alley and his body language here and there. And so we're just really trying to pick up on Sebastian's mood because it could help us understand what led to him walking away off the front porch out the front door. Well, that is something that if she decides to answer, that's on her. But what I know is even on video. Sebastian was having a great day. He was in a great mood. He got to go to BJ. See, he said, from even from what he knows from our video, Sebastian was in a great mood. From all that. So there's a video of him on the Sunday. There's a video of him on the Sunday out having fun. Hmm. So I hope the law enforcement have got that video. And why she never shown Seth this video? Instead, she shoves a photo of him in, in his face on her phone. She shoves a photo of the phone in Seth's face of a photo of him from the Saturday. Why didn't she shove the photo the video of him on the Sunday in his face? So look, here is Sunday. He's having a great day, Sunday. You know what I mean? So he had a colossal popcorn. Say. He hung out with family. He went and played video games at, at uh, Strike and Spare. After that, he went and had dinner at Roadhouse, Texas Roadhouse. He ate his whole meal. I mean, it. I mean, everything in the video, even the videos that Seth has seen, he doesn't show any negative signs of. He's upset or anything like that. As far as we all know, Sebastian had a great day. No, I mean, it sounds like a really great day. I mean, they did a lot. The only video Seth has talked about is the video of him leaving the Texas Roadhouse with his mom at about 6 30 ish. Um, I was just curious. And um, like I said, I mean, every relationship is different, and you're protective of Katie and who she communicates without you. Um, okay, I, think that, the record, I think that has been a little record, difficult. Um, but right, hold on a second. But for the record, Penny can speak uh, when she so chooses. Yep. And she's done interviews without me. No, I'm not talking about interviews. But she hasn't done. She's done one interview. Pardon me, one interview, and that interview is after this one, and it was with a uh, another news channel sort of thing, and it's for four minutes, about four minutes at the most. She spoke without me. Okay. I want to clear up something that Chris said about Sebastian going to live with Seth. And, and Chris, you may ask, what does this have to do with Sebastian missing? It's all part of the narrative. It could mean he ran away. And that is, Chris, did you not say that he was not looking forward to going to live with his father? Yes, I did state that. Seth, did you know this? 
Nope. Uh, Chris, you want to elaborate? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I will. Glad. I'm glad that to elaborate. Become a question. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. I'm sorry, Seth. Start over. Start over. And then Chris, it'll we'll go to you. Seth, go ahead. I know why I was putting him in online school. He needed to be. He needed his therapy. That actually has been started with ABA, so on and so forth, before I put him back into the situation. Because he's not ready for certain things. Okay. So he was so going to go. I'm not going to set my son up for failure. I want my son to succeed. He was going to homeschool until he was ready to go back to regular school. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And it's not really homeschool. I mean, it's, it's just online school. Okay. Online, right? Online school. That's a better term. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said online school. school. Right. Yeah, online yeah. school. Totally different. Really quick, Chris. Um, the day that they had on Sunday with the spaghetti pancakes and bragging to family and BJ's and Texas Roadhouse and bowling and all of these, like, it sounds like the best day ever. Was that like a normal weekend for them? Or was it like, I just, I don't know. Was that like their normal weekend? Right. Well, do me a favor. Let's let's pause that question because you just diverted away from what she asked and let's clear this out. OK, okay. go ahead. We Chris. want the facts. Let's get the facts straight. OK, so, yes, I did tell you Sebastian was not excited about going to his father's house because online school online Seth school. was aware of this because Seth stood in my house with me, Katie and Sebastian in my kitchen and had this conversation where Seth asked his son about you don't want to go to online school. And Sebastian's retort was no, I don't. But okay. I don't really care about playing tit for tat. I understand that this may be a reason why he wanted to run away, so to speak, if that's the case. Right. But we're not going into this. We're not going to play this tit for tat right. on social media. We're not doing this. Okay. No, I don't think it had anything to do with him going to doing online school because Seth said when he used to take him back on one weekend, he took him home, he said he didn't want to go home, right? Now, but it's just, Seth still took him back. Now, bearing in mind, people are saying, but why did Seth take him back home if he didn't want to go home? The thing is, when you got custody, 50-50 custody, or whatever custody it is you got, you cannot just say, you don't want to go home, son? Okay. You stay here with me then. Because as soon as he does that, Kate is going to... Before Se uh, Sebastian can even sit down on, the, on his chair back at his dad's, Kate is going to have him in court. And then Seth will not see his son. He's got to have a good reason for not taking him back home. If Sebastian had said, Dad, Please don't take me back there. Please. This happens. You know what I mean? This has been going on. This has been happening. Right? His dad had a good reason then not to take him back home. And he could afford it in court. Yeah? But just for a child said, I don't want to go with that home, Dad. Well, I just don't want to. It's not a good enough excuse to not take him home. He couldn't lose the chance of not seeing his son again just because he didn't want to go home. If he gave him a good reason for not wanting to go back home, then fair enough. But not without a good reason. And that's why Seth took him back home. Because he didn't give him a reason. Now, if he had gave him that reason, the reason which he's been telling his grandma, right, then Seth would have kept him. And they could have fought it in court. But not just by saying, I just don't want to go. Uh, Seth, go ahead. Chris, unbeknownst to you, had already talked to Sebastian. He knew this would be a permanent thing. And me and him had already spoken. Well, that's the, that, there's a the conversation, conversation you should have had with Katie and myself goes. about what your plans were. I'm sorry, do you want? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. What Seth was saying is that if I had known the conversation that him and Sebastian had, that I would know the whole thing. But the downside is, is that's where Seth should have had that same conversation with me and Katie. And that didn't happen. But this goes right back to here's the thing. If you're saying that because he didn't want to go live with his dad, he potentially ran away. Is that a possibility? 
Sure, we'll put that out there. Okay. But quite honestly, what goes on between Seth, me, his mom, and our household is none of the public's business. If it had something to do with his disappearance, I would understand that, but it doesn't. Well, we don't know that. Well, well I understand that. That's why we're making this clear. And that's right. why I asked about his day because Let's I didn't go back know. To the day. Okay, go ahead. No, okay. So, Chris, you don't know me very well. Um, I have two decades of experience working with autistic children um, and, and different capacities. So I, I do understand they are all different. Um, I do understand that that day may have been very overstimulating for him. So that's why I was asking if that was a normal day for him. And if it wasn't that, I mean, that just gives me more information that maybe he was very overstimulated that day. Chris. Say, all right, so one more time. I'm so sorry. I was, I was just saying, um, in my experience with autistic children, obviously they're all different. Um, but if this was not a normal day for Sebastian on Sunday, when he went and did all of these things, and it sounds like he was gone from home for a while. Um, if this wasn't a normal day for him, would this have been an overstimulating day for him? Mm. Is this something normal? Does he normally go to BJ's and bowling and all of these things on a weekend? Or was this kind of like a special thing? And if it was a special thing, what was, what caused it to be special? Was there an occasion? Uh, if it was a special thing, a mother and a son bonding and just having a good time. I'm not. I'm not being ugly at all. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I'm uh, making. I mean, is this a normal day for them on a weekend? It very, for them to do our all days. Things. Our days fluctuate. Monday through Friday, we're a working family, just like everybody else out there. And when the weekend comes, that's when you get a lot of stuff done. You go a lot of places. You do a lot of things. And a lot of times, that's where you know you go and spend time with your kids and do extra things. Sebastian's not in sports like most kids. So we don't spend ball time at, uh, at the ballpark. You know, when Seth has Sebastian on the weekends, he goes and does fishing and things like that with Sebastian just as well. I mean, Seth works long hours. I work long hours. And you know, I'm not I saying mean, any so of that you, is you gotta, suspicious at all, Chris. I'm just asking if that was normal. Because if it wasn't normal and he was overstimulated, that could be a reason for him to have ran out of the house. No. Okay. He was not overstimulated. Okay, so that wasn't one of the possible reasons for him to leave here's here's what i'll say everything is on the table oh his voice is getting to me i'll show you the videos you don't show now, the videos, now in hindsight that is a conversation you and i need to have offline away from everybody else in our own private conversation you and i we sit down and we can talk Literally, at least you had people watch us doing it Sunday at that vigil. Well, they I were snapping that, pictures because they were trying to get some juicy information. No, he didn't set that up, Chris. He didn't set that up. Apparently, at first, you was very, very loud. The voices were loud from both of you, from you and Seth. Right? So people looked over to see. What the hell's going on over there with Seth? Right? And then, see, Chris was there. Eventually, you voices, voices got lowered. Right? But it wasn't set up for people to take the photos or whatever. Perhaps if you didn't go in like a bull in a china shop, as you're having it, this interview, with your loud mouth as usual, issuing your demands because I bet there was a few uh, uh, at least one demand in that conversation you had because you cannot go without having control you demand people to do it your way to fall in line with how he thinks and if they don't he doesn't like it and that's what he doesn't like about this interview this is why he's coming this interview like a ball in a china shop. Now, I'm going to stop it there because I must admit his voice is getting to me. And I kind of like, can't take no more of his voice. Right? But as you could see from that first interview, from that one interview he did with Duchess to this interview, as I said, when he did it with Duchess, it was a prepared thing. They knew he was coming up. And they was like sort of censoring what questions to ask. Because he did say at one stage, 
let the questions fly. If you've got nothing to hide, let them fly. Right? And he was very polite and whatever on that one. But on this one, he wasn't invited as such. It wasn't about him. It wasn't, oh, we're having an interview with Chris Proudfoot. We're having an interview with P.I. Chloe. Right? And there's only going to be there for, what, an hour? Two hours at the most. And because he, he didn't like what he was hearing, because she said something like, I think Katie holds the key. She does. And that's why people keep asking, like, what was he like? Apparently there's a video of him on a Sunday from what he's saying. I've never heard Seth mention that video. Never have I heard Seth mention that video. I've never heard anyone else mention that video. Because I've always said, hold on, she took a selfie or a photo on the, on the Saturday. But on the Sunday, he had such a fun day with his niece, his cousin and his aunts. And he was at BJ's. Then he come home, put the shopping away. Then they went out to bowling. And then they went for dinner. You know what I mean? He had such a fun, full fun day. But no photos, no pictures. No pictures with his cousins, no pictures with his aunts. You know what I mean? I went to my grandson's a couple of weeks back now. Beginning of July. Yeah. June. Was it June or July? Beginning of tenth beginning of June, sorry. Rang about the tenth of June. And we went out on the Saturday. I went on the Friday and on the Saturday we went out. And we went to this place where they had like uh an indoor oh god place where they've got animals in there like uh you go in and there's they're all in cages and it's like lizards and spiders and insects and birds flying around and butterflies going about and, and then you go in another section. Now that section, I wasn't looking at the I wasn't looking at the tanks. I was looking at the floor. And my steward said, What are you looking at the floor for? I said, In case one got out. Snakes. We've gone into the section with the snakes. I'm looking on the floor, love. If I see something squiggle along that floor, I'm out of here. Right? So, we had all that. And then after that, we went to... Did we get something to eat? No. Uh, we went and booked the bowling. And we went, gone, got a drink, and we went bowling. And then we got something to eat. Just snacky stuff. And then we played bowls. And then we come out of there... And can we go to the fair then? Do we go to the fair before we went bowling? I can't remember. But we went to the fair. Right? And then after that we went in. There's an arcade as well which we went in. He had a great day. A full afternoon. Right? And I took loads of pictures. And I've got videos and things like that of him. I haven't posted it up on Facebook because I won't post nothing like that no more on my page because I've got my own reasons. They're for me. And if my son wants to see him, I'll show him to my son. But I'm not posting them on Facebook no more. Right? I might post the odd photo of him, but I'm not posting all of them no more. So... I can understand why people are asking, what was it, it's, it's autistic, what, what's it too much for him? Right? I've got one grandson who I have every second weekend, twice a month I have him, and I have to literally bribe him to go to the shop, just to, so I can go to the shop. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have to, I have to bribe him. Right, and so 
he doesn't like going out. Once he's in, he doesn't like going out. But then he'll go, but you said you'd take me to the park at six o'clock at night. I go, are you kidding me? We've had all day with nice weather. And now it's come up to your dinner time, your evening meal. You want to go to the park? I don't think so, mate. Right? And that is how he is. He doesn't want to go out. Then all of a sudden, when, it's, when really, he knows it's too late to go out. He'll say, I want to go to the park. He's sick of going to the park. But you didn't want to go out. Now, bear in mind, he'd been out already that day. He'd been out, picked his, his cousin up, being met his aunt, went to BJ's. Right? He then come home. Perhaps he didn't want to go out again afterwards. Perhaps he didn't want to go out bowling to the bowling alley. Right? And that's his mum's way of saying, well, I'll tell you what, if we go to the bowling alley, we'll go for dinner afterwards. All right, we'll get some dinner. We'll go to BJ's. Or perhaps his mum wanted to go to BJ's because she didn't want to cook. So she said, tell you what, uh, to Texas Roadhouse, tell you what, if you go bowling, let's go bowling first. Even though you don't want to go out, we'll go bowling first, okay? No, he'd go out then because he likes bowling. And then we'll go and get dinner because they're already out. But did something happen during that day? something happen on the way home? Did something happen in the house? Something happened Sunday evening, either on the way home from the Texas Road house or once they got back to the house. Something happened because Sebastian was not seen again. There's video of him, someone, some person, putting the trash cans out, the rubbish bins out. They can't, police are saying it's definitely him. His dad says he can't be 100% sure. But something definitely happened. And as we said, Katie holds the key. She may not know it. Perhaps if they just knew, perhaps, what was she talking about on the phone? I know it sounds a bit personal, but was you, was everything okay with you and Chris? Was there any problems with you? If there's problems, tell us. Because if you're not going to tell the police, then the police can't help. Was there a discussion with you and Chris on the phone? And did Sebastian maybe overhear it? Right? Did you have an argument with Sebastian because he wouldn't go to sleep? Things like that. See, because it's just not sitting, it's not right, it's, there's something not right with this old disappearance. And I hope to God, I still hope and pray that one day he will be found alive. But he won't go back to his dad and he won't go back to his mum, not straight away. Oh, no. Child services will have him. They won't let him go back there until they know why he left. If he's found alive, they want to know why he left. Before anything else. So if Katie thinks she's getting him back, she's not. Seth has got more chance of getting him than Katie. Because Katie was the one in charge of him when he went missing. Not Seth, Katie. And with everything that's come out in the in the child services reports, how many times they've been there, and the fact that Chris, and I still stick to my word, something happened December time. Rung up to Christmas. I think it all started around about the December time. Right? Chris had his daughter there at Christmas, right? Sebastian went to his dad's. Now, perhaps Katie's, Katie wasn't happy with that. Perhaps she wasn't happy with him going to his dad's at Christmas. Because I must admit, I'd like to, if I had young kids and I was separated from my husband, I'd like to 
have my kids with me at Christmas. You know what I mean? I'll probably come up with some sort of way of saying, you know what? Why don't you come here for Christmas, spend Christmas with us? That way, he's got both his mum and his dad here. You know what I mean? He sees both his mum and dad at Christmas. We get to see him open his presents and things like that. That's how I'd probably work it, depending on what I had if I was younger and I had a partner or whatever. But I couldn't give my child up for Christmas, I couldn't. Not when they're young like that. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. But like I said, I'll put the links in the description. Please go. If I, When I find the full version of that dispatch call, I will put it out on my YouTube community page. I'll put it on my Threads account and my Twitter account. At the moment, I still can't get on my Facebook account. <sighs> but I'll hopefully within a few days, I'll have that sorted out. So. <coughs> <coughs> so I'll keep it on. But I will put a link into the three videos that we've watched. Or gone through. I would say, watch the video with the PIE. That's interesting because uh, the woman, the host of it, I can't know her name, she asks a question and she doesn't go, well, what about when you did this, this did this, oh, but, uh, what, and all this. She doesn't go on and on and on and on. She just asks the question and leaves it out there for them to answer. And that's what I like. So it's quite easy to watch that one. It really is. Because she's, she doesn't babble on about anything. Like, I've got transcripts where I've got, like, half of an a 4 size piece of paper full of one the host putting a question out there, but then literally breaking this question down, right, to the point where they are giving them the answer to the question. I'm going, really? And it took me w a couple of weeks to try and type it all up because it goes on and on and on. This one, because the, the questions are being asked, the question is being answered. Question asked, question answered. It's very quick. So, yes, I'll put both, all the links in the description. So, please, go and listen to them all. If you haven't already seen them, please do. Till, to, till then, if you haven't already, please do me a big, big favour. Hit that like button. It does help with the analytics or something. Hit the share. Leave a comment. And if you like what you hear and see, and you like to hear more, please subscribe. That way you'll be kept updated with all future lives, all future videos. Till then, good night.